Spike, I, to call upon Her Excellency, the Ambassador of Israel to Belgium and Luxembourg to address us. She brings with, uh, with her a message from Zion, from Eretz Israel, to all of us. Ambassador. I'll just repeat once more. L'chaim tovim shalom. Dear Madam Commissioner, dear colleague Ambassador, I am sorry that the mayor of Antwerp, Mr. Bardeweber, had to leave because I wanted to tell him how much we appreciate his genuine support to the State of Israel. Dear members, friends of the Antwerp community, rabbis and distinguished guests, אני מודה לכם על ההזמנה ועל ההזדמנות שניתנת לי לשאת דברים בפני פורום מכובד זה. We are gathered here to discuss the current situation and the fate of the different Jewish communities around Europe. There is no one better than you, leaders of these communities, who are well informed in order to share and reflect on the current situation. During my career as an Israeli diplomat, I have had the honor to be posted in five different Jewish European communities, the Netherlands, Geneva, Marseille, and now as ambassador to Belgium and Luxembourg. I know these communities are very different indeed, but they have one main common denominator, namely the same history the same religion, and the same compassion for the State of Israel. Since the establishment of the State of Israel, the State and the Diaspora have continuously maintained a balanced equilibrium in their relationship, both knowing that is sometimes sensitive relationship is beneficial for, to all. In order to, t to keep and safeguard Israel as a sovereign state and home to the Jewish people, Israel needs a strong diaspora while the diaspora needs a strong state of Israel. Meanwhile, the Israeli government sees itself as being responsible for all Jews worldwide, whether they live in Israel or the diaspora. This can be seen by the support the state since its establishment for provided to communities in distress, whether in Asia, Africa, or behind the Iron Curtain. It was important to provide these communities with the ability and tools to be able to maintain their Jewish heritage until being able to live and choose to, to choose Israel or elsewhere as their new home. We are grateful that there are no more communities in distress today. No matter who was or who is in government, the fate of the diaspora in, and its guarantee for its uh, safekeeping is the first and foremost important to the leading government in Israel. It is therefore expected that the diaspora, no matter their political views, should always stand and defend the state of Israel. Israel has survived against the slimmest of odds, even though it is often challenged by external forces that seek its destruction and uh, delegitimation, Israel remains a viable democratic force in the Middle East. The source of Israel's strength, however, is not only its mechanism of state, but rather the passion of its citizens, both inside its borders as well as the Jewish people in the, its diaspora. 
and this is all based on democracy, values, and Jewish culture. Even more so, the achievements of the State of Israel are also the achievement of the Jewish people worldwide. You too play a role and have a share in these achievements. Years ago, this was evident that the Jews in the diaspora saw Israel as the only country that would accept them in times of war and persecution. Now, however, some young Jews are comfortable living in the diaspora with no perceived threats to their lives. Unfortunately, some Jews in the diaspora no longer feel connected to Israel and do not inherently feel the need for Israel and the Jewish state. And the Jewish state. This may be caused by and can lead to assimilation and to loss of important assets of our Jewish people. Young Jews must better develop their own Jewish identities and they must understand the role that the State of Israel plays in maintaining the Judaism. I urge you rabbis from all around the Europe with the abilities and the duty to include Jews from all walks of life and help enhance their connection with the Jewish state. Furthermore, in the past Shabbat Torah reading, we learned Ve'afta l'reacha kamucha. Love your neighbor as yourself. As Jews, we need to unite. Our backgrounds, level of observance, or political views should not affect the relationship we have with one another or our love and relationship for the State of Israel. As I mentioned before, we no, we no longer have communities in distress, but the rise of anti-Semitism is worrisome. I would like to assure you all that with the happiness and joy we had in celebrating 71 years of the State of Israel just a couple of days ago, we share with you the suffering for the harsh and anti-Semitic attacks which have in impacted far too many of Jews around the world. Living in the community you grew up in, having felt safe and at home, and now being afraid to go to the synagogue, needing soldiers outside Jewish day schools, and needing to fight for the right of ritual slaughter, and possibly in the future for the right of circumcision is the harsh reality diaspora Jews are living in today. What we can learn from what happened in Europe 75 years ago is the importance of fighting hate, barbarism, and radicalism early on before bad and damage can happen. Dear guests, today we are experiencing a resurgence of anti-Semitism around the world. We once again hear false and de dehumanizing, dehumanizing actions against the Jews. We see attempts to kill and harm in the name of radical ideologies. These acts may turn flourishing communities into communities in distress. Since the establishment of the State of Israel, a new form of anti-Semitism, whose effort is to demonize the Jewish state and deny the Jewish people the right of self-determination in our ancestral homeland. This is anti-Semitism in its purest form. However, some like to defer it as anti-Zionism, when the nation of every country gets to fly their flag with pride while the Jewish people cannot, cannot do it. This is anti-Semitism. There is no so shortage of European politicians mourning dead Jews. But where are some of those leaders when living Jews are being victimized for fake imaged actions of Israel? 
Why does the crowd thin when Israel, the only Jewish state in the world, is held to double standards at the UN than any other country? Nowadays, people try to defer the classic form, form of anti-Semitism from anti-Zionism, which I repeat, is a modern form of anti-Semitism. There are people in Europe who think that, that it is necessary to combat anti-Semitism and be more tolerant towards anti-Zionism. This is a big, big mistake. In my opinion, in my opinion, being tolerant to anti-Zionism is one of the reasons why there is a rise of classic anti-Semitism that we are encountering in recent years. And anti-Zionism is an an anti-Zionist is an anti-Semit, and there is a need for not only legislation, but also education to society. As I believe that many anti-Semites have their views and ideas without any foundation, edu education, or rational understanding. In these upcoming weeks, Torah reading of Parashat Emor Sages say that the opening verse teaches us Lazir Gdolim al Ktanim, which literally translates to warn the elders, which literally translates translate to, to warn the elders concerning the children. In short, we learn that we need to educate our children and not sit back passively and expect their education to happen naturally. Education is key. We need to educate society of, on anti-Semitism and on anti-Zionism. We also need to educate Jewish communities to unite no matter the level of observance, religious outlook, religious outlook or political inclinations. And I believe that this way, together we can make change and aim to create a more optimistic future for the diaspora. Adonai Ozla Moiten, Adonai Evarechet Amo Shalom. Thank you and good evening.